I'm Diana Bolander, the assistant director slash curator here at the Art, Rar West Art Museum. We're really excited this summer to have the opportunity to borrow this work by Felix Gonzalez Torres from Art Bridges. It's very different in concept than anything else we have in the collection. Um, it's called Untitled LA and it's from 1991. And it consists of green candies that are individually wrapped in cellophane and there's about 50 pounds of them. Uh, and it's owned by Arts Bridges and the Crystal Bridges Museum of American Art. Felix Gonzalez Torres was born in 1957 in Cuba, and then he moved to New York City and uh, studied there, and then taught at the New York University until 1989. He died in 1996 at the age of 38 due to complications of AIDS. Much of his work is seen to reflect his own homosexuality in an abstract way. Gonzalez Torres resisted being labeled as a gay artist. Um, he was becoming active during the 1980s, during a cultural war where um, any reference to homosexuality in art or expression of homosexuality was seen by some as an attack on um, what some people thought were American traditional values. Artists like Robert Maplethorpe caused a controversy that which caused the defunding of some of the National Endowment for the Arts programs. Gonzalez Torres used coded metaphors to talk about his sexuality in his work to avoid scandal. It was hard for people to attack the work when it was made up of candy or pieces of paper or clocks. In this piece, we are presented with the pile of green cellophane wrapped candies. Uh, and viewers can come and take and taste the candy. And it's a moment of engagement that's sensory and personal. It's intimate and it's physical. Um, and the work eventually wastes away as candy is taken away and is replenished. The work is supposed to start out at 50 pounds of green candies, but there's no exact shape that it's supposed to take and the installation instructions are purposely vague. Uh, it's just supposed to be on the ground and there's not supposed to be anything in the way that would prevent someone from taking the candy. Um, and he did a number of similar works that are collectively referred to as candy spills and they're made up of different colors of candies that start at different weights. The first piece he did like this was made up of fortune cookies. Um, and one reading of these works is that they're seen to represent the deterioration of a body ravaged by illness. So they slowly uh, become smaller and waste away. And then the replenishment of the candies could be seen as a type of immortality. And this work was created the same year that Gonzalez Torres watched his longtime partner Ross die from an AIDS-related illness. Felix Gonzalez Torres himself avoided assigning explicit interpretations to his works, and he preferred them to remain available for everyone to experience them in their own personal way. So v Felix Gonzalez Torres dealt a lot with the question of what is art? He incorporated repetitive el elements that were infinitely reproducible, and they're readily consumable, even edible, like a piece of candy or a sheet of paper. And when presented at museums like ours that are publicly funded, uh, Gonzalez Torres provides this interesting dynamic where there's unrestricted availability of one thing, and there's the unavailability of everything else in the building. It is, by design, replaceable in a way uh, that nothing else in our collection or our galleries is. It's not one of a kind, it's not irreplaceable, it's not special or artisanal. This is mass-produced candy. We literally ordered it from the internet and put it out. Museum visitors, literally, they come in and they take a piece of the art, and in some case, they eat it. And this really challenges our preconceptions about art being precious. The work is the idea of the candy, and that's where the worth lies. Sometimes I think it's hard as museum visitors and uh, viewers to wrap our heads around the idea of conceptual art like this because there isn't a single object. There isn't the preciousness that there might be with a single oil painting or a single sculpture or even an addition of prints. And as an institution, we talked about whether or not we should have it out at a time when we took away almost everything else that can be touched in the museum. There's no brochures, there's no hands-on educational activities right now, nothing like that. But we felt it was important to have this piece out right now. In the 1980s and 90s, Felix Gonzalez Torres was a gay man living in New York City during the AIDS epidemic. It was a time when his community was incredibly affected by a new and confusing disease that caused much suffering. Um, the government did not respond quickly. People weren't sure exactly what was going on. Lots of people got sick and lots of people died. What we're going through now with COVID-19 is certainly very different, but there are some parallels. Gonzalez Torres responded by creating things of beauty that were deceivingly simple. Light bulbs strung in space, a large pile of, can of sheets of paper that are arranged as a neat stack that are reminiscent of a gravestone or a monument, a pile of candy. The relationship between beauty and grief and suffering is complex, and these works give us permission and opportunity to pause and ask ourselves, 
what will we take away from our current reality of coronavirus?